Hello, my Pottery Posse. How are you doing today? I hope you're doing great um, because every day is a great day to play with clay. Okay. <laughs> um, so today I don't have something to show you right now because, oh, but you've already seen the thumbnail, so you already know what it is. Well, I'm sorry. I can't show it to you right now because it's in the kiln, so... If you have no idea who I am, I am so sorry about that. My name is Emily Edens. I am the Potter Eden. And today we will be making a pinch pot, but we're also going to be using the coil technique to make it taller. So um, stick around for that, but also stick around for the um, face pot. Yes, I'm going to be making a planter that has a face on it because it was requested and I'm not telling you by who. Thanks for the recommendation because it definitely challenged me. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, like always my friends, make sure you are wedging like your piece's life depends on it. Then we will go ahead and slam this one on the table on all its sides. Slamming it will really help to compact the clay, but our goal here is to eventually make a nice rounded ball. Since a flat surface isn't going to do that for us, go ahead and slap your clay to soften the edges. If your clay starts buckling and folding in on itself, push the clay over itself as not to put any bubbles in it. Once you've slammed it enough, roll it on the table to finish off the ball. Smack, 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 smack. Boom, boom. Now we're gonna take our thumbs and make a hole to the center of the ball, just the center. Keep your thumb in the middle and wrap your fingers around to the bottom of the ball. Begin pinching from the very bottom with the intent of pushing the clay from the bottom to the rim. Do this in columns, pinching from the bottom to the top and then turning it. You'll wanna make sure that you keep your fingers firm and curled. If not, you'll end up making a plate because you'll just be squeezing the clay, making it go outward instead of pulling it up towards the rim. Squish, 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 squish. Squish, 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 And yes, the rim will start to crack, but don't worry too much unless your clay gets super dried out everywhere. In which case, go ahead and take your water-filled sponge and smooth over the inside and outside surfaces. Then keep going until your bottom and walls are about a fourth of an inch to an eighth of an inch thick. Squish, 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 squish. Once you've achieved that, smooth over the surface with a sponge and a rubber rib. This little tool has been such a miracle worker in so many ways. If you don't have one already, I highly suggest getting one. When you smooth over the surface, make sure to support the walls with your hand on the other side. You can really compress the clay like this and get the clay even more consistent in thickness. If the rim of your pinch pot is super uneven, you can take your knife tool and cut off the unevenness and then smooth it over with your sponge, curled halfway around the newly cut rim. With your freshly cut rim, you can actually see just how uneven the wall thickness can be. Now, because we can't make a ginormous pinch pot, I started off with the pinch pot technique and I'm going to continue making this pot taller with the coil technique. The basic premise is that you make a coil to the length of the circumference of the rim of the pot, score and slip the edge, put them together and smooth them out. You don't have to do this in a singular layer registers, kind of like I'm doing because I'm so indecisive about how tall I want this to be. You can make it a very long coil and overlap the coil in a snake-like fashion until you run out. Then smooth it out the same way, again, smoothing and blending with your fingers, sponge, and a rubber rib.
Just a clarification, I'm using a sponge to put slippy water onto my coil. I'm not touching the scoring because that would defeat the purpose of that scoring. The scoring acts like Velcro while the slip acts like glue. It just brings the two pieces to a muddy point so that they stick together and join as one. Now, because I'm making a portrait planter, I'm gonna be making some face parts and attaching them. I'm not going to go into too great of detail on how I'm doing this because humanistic sculptural things, that's just, it's not my forte. <laughs> but basically, I have a picture that I'm looking at to fashion my add-ons after, comparing the size of one facial part to the size of another but also emphasizing certain aspects of the face to make it more caricature-like. I can't tell you who this is, but I invite you to make guesses in the comment section below. I'll give you a hint. It's a pun and he is very famous. As I make my pieces, because the surface of the pinch pot is quite moist, I am actually only scoring and slipping on the add-on and then blending it into the pot's surface. I ended up adding another three coils to the top because I made his schnoz so darn big and his eyeballs need a spot to go. So his eyes are actually a white clay that I put lower lid coils on the bottom just like I'm doing for the top lids now. I also realized that I should have pushed back his eye sockets a bit more than I did. Hindsight's 2020. Making the wrinkles with the back of my curved knife tool now and I may or may not smooth them over a little with my finger. I think the rough looks a little bit better. So I started to make pupil holes which just didn't look right so I actually just carved out the entire iris. put his ear too high, whoops. So if you actually look at the anatomy of drawing a face, you'll see that more often than not, the top of the ear is actually in line with the eyebrows or the top of the eyes. And then the bottom of the ear is in line with the mouth. And the bridge of the nose should come out further than the eyes, that's for sure.
you so much for watching this whole video and making it to this point in the video. Um, if you feel like it, you can go ahead and like it right down here and you can watch a playlist or watch a video. If you hit the subscribe button, make sure that you have it before because if you have before, then that just means that you're unsubscribing. So if you haven't before, hit the subscribe button. And uh, I guess I will see you all in the next one. Okay, bye!